In this video, we are going to look at calculating formulas using relative and absolute cell references. And the first thing I always like to do when I come into a spreadsheet is just take a look at the type of information that I have. Uh, you can see here that we have uh, in our first column, column A, we have the student name and then we have their grades for test one and test two. We also have columns that we need to fill out here giving their grade total and then also their grade percentage out of a hundred. And if you look over to the right you can see that we do have an assumption area over here that says that our total possible points is 200. So each test is worth 100 points and then we can get their percentage how many points they earned out of their total possible of 200. So the first thing that we'll need to do is come over to the grade total column in column D and we'll, we're going to calculate out John's grade total. Now we're going to do that using a formula that just adds together his test 1 score of 95 and his test 2 score of 79. So if we click in the grade total cell we always want to start our formula with an equal sign that tells Excel that we will be typing in a formula and not just text. And we can just click on the cells we'd like to include. So first I'll click on John's test one score in B2 and you can see how it adds that to our formula. We will then add C2 where his test two score is located. Once you have that, you can hit enter to see the result. Now we want to take this formula and we want to copy it down to each of the other students. We don't want to have to type this formula in 10 times. So if you hold your mouse in the lower right hand corner of the cell, you can either double click or you can click and drag to copy that formula down. Now let's go ahead and take a look at these formulas. To look at just one formula, you can double click in the cell or hit F2. If you want to look at all the formulas at the same time, you can show formulas. You can do that very easily by coming over to the formulas tab and clicking on the show formulas button. And you can see here in this screen tip there also is a shortcut key for that so that's control and then your accent key and that will do that very quickly for you. I'll just use the show formulas button in this case and this allows us to see all of our formulas in the spreadsheet at once. So we have all of our grade totals listed out here. Now notice that as we copied down the formula changed. It followed us down. So John's formula was B2 plus C2 but now Sally's formula is B3 plus C3 and that's what we want, right? We want to see uh, the scores for each particular student. We don't always want to refer to John's scores for everyone else in the class. So that's wonderful for us. That saves us a lot of time. We don't have to sit here and recopy these formulas over and over. It does that automatically and this is what is called a relative cell reference. So it's looking at these cell references in terms of distance from the cell that we are currently located in. Right now I'm in D2. So it's taking the cell D2 and it's saying go two cells, one, two to the left. So that's John's test one score. And add the cell, one cell to the left, which is in C2. Right? And then as we copy it continues to look two cells to the left and then add the cell one cell to the left. Okay, So it continues to do that for us. Turning off my show formulas there, just clicked that button, it just toggles on and off for us. And then we'll look at the grade percentage column. So to calculate out the grade percentage, we're looking at the grade total for each student so 174 for John and then we're going to divide that number by our total possible points over here in J1 which is 200. So we're going to start again with an equal sign to create our formula 
and we'll click on John's grade total in D2. We'll then divide it by 200. Now don't just type 200 right into your formula. That becomes very inefficient when you have lots of formulas and lots of things going on in your spreadsheet, unlike this one, which is relatively simple. Instead, you'll want to use a reference to our assumption cell in J1. That allows us to then change that value, but not have to actually change our formulas, which can get confusing when they become more complicated. So I'll hit Enter and I'll see that John's grade percentage is 0.87 uh, or 87 percent. We'll worry about changing the formatting in a moment. So now let's go ahead and copy this formula down and take a look at what happens. All right, notice that for all of the other students we got an error here and this error says that you're trying to divide by zero which if you remember from your math classes you cannot do that. So we have a problem here. Let's take a look. Let's turn on our formulas and see what happened. So right now, uh, John's formula worked correctly because it's D2, which is his grade total, divided by J1, which is our total possible points over here from the right. Now let's see what happens when we look at Sally's grade percentage formula. Well, it's looking to, to her grade total in D3, which is correct, so that's not a problem. However, it is now dividing it by J2, and if you look over to the right at J2, this is no longer pointing to our total possible points of 200, so we have a problem here. We could come back in and edit this formula to J1, but then we would have to do that for each of our students. Well, when you only have a few, I think we have about eight here, when you only have a few, this is not a big deal. However, if you had 200 students, this is no longer becomes efficient. If you ever find yourself typing the same formula over and over and over, ask yourself, what is a better way to do this? And chances are, there is. So I'm going to delete out my other students here, and I'll just turn back on uh, on my regular view here so I can see everything. So what we want to do is make a change to John's formula. We want to make sure that it always points to cell J1. So what we'll do is with our cursor right over J1 in the formula, we will hit the F4 key. Now that's a shortcut that will add in what is called an absolute cell reference. Now you can see that it looks a little bit different. We now have dollar sign J dollar sign 1. And what that does is it locks the formula in cell J1. So when we copy it, it is always pointing to J1. Let's go ahead and try it. So now we can see that the formula did work and if we look at Sally's formula, up in the formula bar we have D3 divided by J1, so that's correct. Now let's go ahead and just format these values. I'll select them all and from the Home tab I'll just click on Percent. And now we can see the grade percentages for each student. Let's try another example. In this spreadsheet we're looking at a table that will tell us based on different savings amounts 500 up to $1,000, how much money will be in savings at the end of 12, 24, or 36 months. So let's start by entering a formula in this first cell in our table. We'll use our equal sign to start the formula and in this case we want to multiply $500 by 12 months and we'll see how much money this family will have at the end of 12 months. Okay, so they've got $6,000. If we then take this formula and let's copy it down our table, all right, we can see we have a problem. They're probably not going to have $144,000 after two years of only contributing $500 a month. So let's take a look at our formula and see what happened. 
Okay, so now we're multiplying. Instead of multiplying by $500 per month, we're multiplying by the $6,000 result that we had in our previous calculation. So this is a relative cell reference. As we copied down, that formula followed us. A7, however, still appears to be correct. So let's delete out those formulas and try again. Now we always want it to point to $500 for this column. But as we copy along the row to $600, $700, $800, we do want it to follow the column. So what we'll use in this case is called a mixed cell reference. If I put my cursor right next to the B5 in my formula and hit F4, that will add in my absolute cell reference. Now what that will do will always point to 500. So if we were to copy it to the right, it would still point to 500. So we don't want that exactly. If we hit F4 again, now this will lock it in row 5. So as we copy down, the reference will stay in row 5, which is where we have our savings deposit per month. However, as we copy across the columns over to the right here, it will allow the column to change. This is exactly what we want to have happen. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And we will copy down the column. That looks much better. And now let's copy across the table and see what happens to the rest of our values here. Okay, so we're not completely there yet. For $600 savings a month, in 12 months you would have $3.6 million. I'm sure that would be wonderful, but that's not exactly right for this formula. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happened. So this is now pointing to C$5, so it's locked in row 5 at 600, but it's allowed the column to, to change there. So we came over to 600 instead of saying pointed uh, to column B. But B6 over here, again, it's copying. It's no longer pointing to 12 months. Now it's pointing to $6,000, which is in B6. So that's not quite there either. So let's modify that first formula again. So now we'll use a mixed cell reference to A6 that will always point to the correct number of months. So if I hit A4 once, that would always lock at 12 months. So we don't quite want that. If we have A dollar sign 6, that will lock in row 6, right here on 12 months. So we don't want it to lock on 12 months. We want to be able to copy it down to 24 and 36. If I hit F4 one more time, now we've got it locked in column A, which is where our months are but the row is a relative cell reference and can change. This sounds like what we want. So now let's recopy this formula and we'll copy it both down and we'll copy it over so it will complete the entire table. And now that we look at these values we can see they're more correct. And if we were to look at a random example, let's just look at $800 savings a month for 24 months. Our formula is pointing to E5, $800, multiplied by A7, which is 24 months.